Have you watched this team in defensive line last year? What, what did you see and what do you think some of the, some of the issues might be? I don't know about the issues. I I, um, I saw a talented front, you know, with um, guys with a lot of versatility that can be used in um, in, in different spots uh, according to different situations. Um, and uh, I saw a tough group that played physical. I thought they played hard, uh, and it's one of the reasons that uh, that brought me here. What do you like about uh, D Ford's addition, Chris, and, and what do you see out of him? Well, obviously, his ability to rush rush the quarterback uh, on third down, you know, his takeoff is one of the best in the game. He's really quick out of his stance, can get on tackles really fast, um, and he's um, really starting to come into his own here. You know, especially last year was a big year for him and um, what he was able to do as a pass rusher and his physicality on the edge as a run defender also um, kind of goes underappreciated with a lot of pass rushers in, in the National Football League. Everybody just talks about their ability to rush and that's the only thing they can do. D can also play the run too. So um, just all those factors combined into one. But, you know, the main thing is his pass rush. You know, that's where he's... He butters his bread right there. There's, there's talk that he will help free up DeForest Buckner inside, but do you see that, or what do you want to see Buckner get better at this year? Well, I, I think, um, you know, your, your first question, great rushers complement each other. You know, anytime you have multiple or, or, or three or four, you know, the, the pass rush gets stronger and stronger, and the more resources other teams have to use to try to allocate uh, to those guys to, to stop them from, you know, getting to the quarterback. And um, second part of your question is Buck. You know, obviously Buck had a really, really good year last year, and it's just a matter of fine-tuning little small details with him at this point in time. Um, just trying to get a little bit better. He's not going to take huge jumps. You know, you're not going to see, you know, like a guy going from his rookie year to his second year, him take this huge jump. Right now it's just little things with Buck, just trying to them sharpen that ax just a little bit more every single day and just get a little bit sharper with his technique and the things that he's, you know, trying to get done, just maybe a little bit tighter with his hands, a little bit lower with his pad level, just really small small details that we're working on with him right now. Kind of Solomon, oh, go ahead, Jen. Kind of same thing with Solomon Thomas. Uh, he's obviously been improving and his mentality and more into it. What have you seen from him just in this little bit since um, last? I've seen since since the day I arrived here, I've seen a player with a, a chip on his shoulder. I've seen a, a player with a look in his eye that he's ready to take that next step. Um, you know, everybody got still, with like Solomon's still a young player. You know, he's going into his third year. You know, and they say NFL players usually take the biggest jump going from their second to their third year. And um, based off the, the way he's been working from the day I got here, um, whether it be in the classroom, uh, film study, in the weight room, and then on the practice field, he's been, he's got that look in his eye. Um, he's ready to get better. Um, obviously, last year was a rough year. He had to go through a lot of stuff. You know, and I think he's covered that with y'all. You know, it's not easy on a player at any position, um, but uh, he overcame it, and he's he's going to be stronger because because of it. At the time, it's kind of hard for him to see, but um, Solomon's been working extremely, extremely hard. Probably, you know, w one of the hardest workers we have. So, Robert Solomon, uh, just Robert Solomon was just saying that, that there's a lot of expectations on you guys. The expectations uh, in your group, as as the guy who's with them every day, do you encourage them to embrace that, or how how do you approach that? My expectations is day to day. Let's get better today. We'll worry about tomorrow when tomorrow gets here. Let's get better today, and then when tomorrow arrives, we'll get better tomorrow, and we'll stack one on top of the next and see what the end result is at the end once we really start playing in the fall. So, uh, Robert Sala said at the Senior Bowl that, that one of your first tasks was to to watch film of of Solly and say, what does he do well, and identify that and, and kind of pick his spot to take you know the best advantage of him. So what did that research kind of uncover for you in terms of you know judging his skill set and where you want to put him? Uh, just based off what you see on on film, is Solomon's always a guy that wants to try to do everything exactly right. Okay, and so. When I looked at him, um, you know, you, you see a, a player that can that has versatility, that can play outside, and in certain situations you can slide him inside and utilize his, his quickness and his speed. And I didn't want to take that element away because he is a versatile player. But what I wanted to, did want to do with him is try to simplify things and take so much information that's coming into his brain and just try to narrow things down and get him to play as fast as he possibly can, knowing that mistakes are going to be made along the way. But I want them mistakes being made playing fast, playing aggressive, 
not thinking too much and, and paralyzing yourself as a player. So he's taken to it and he's doing a really, really good job. A lot of people have been talking about uh, you, you preferring wide nine schemes. And what does that mean to you? What is your philosophy as a coach? What is the hallmark of a, of a Chris Kassirik, uh defensive line? Um, aggressive, physical, um, a group that, that you see four, four D linemen on the field pursuing the ball wherever it's out on the field. Um, trying to be the hardest playing position group in the National Football League. That's what we strive for every single day. A group that plays together, uh, a group that's unselfish, um, and just a, a group that you see when they're, when they're on the field, they're playing with their hair on fire. You know, and, and we're going to you know, obviously utilize the nine technique some. I've always used it in my career, along with other fronts. Uh, you know, it ain't going to just specifically be all nine technique. We will we'll jump into other fronts also and utilize whatever the game plan calls for us to try to win the game that week. Yeah. What do you like about the nine specifically? The, ed, the edge setting ability that, that you know, teams that, um, you know, want to try to get on your perimeter, you can set the a physical edge in a run game and it does give you a little bit better angle to rush the passer um, on first and second down, you know, then, then a little bit tighter of alignment than the six technique, which you know, we'll use some of the other fronts. Like I said, it won't specifically be all nine technique, but you know, we'll also use some nine at times too. So he's a contained player in, in the in the run game. Uh, yes, on certain runs, it depends on what you're getting. Um, you know, there's also there's certain situations where he has to get underneath stuff, and and, and backers are flowing up, spill it, and stuff's come. You know, backers are flowing over the top. Just depends on the situation and and what's happening on that particular play. You'd rather have Bosa out there, of course. How is he able to take advantage of these OTAs? Um, Right now, it's mentally, um, you know, and then and, and, you know, getting trying to get back healthy and all that stuff. But he needs to get as mental as many mental reps as he possibly can. You know, watching the other guys, it's it's always sometimes hard when a guy you know gets nicked up and stuff, and he has to watch from the sideline to to realistically try to put himself in the play. But that's what he has to do right now because he can't go out there physically, and you know, until he gets a little bit better. Um, so every mental rep that he can get, put yourself in a play from the play call. We try to get him to play call. He knows what it is. He sees the formation, sees where he would line up, get on his keys, and see how he would react to the situation like he was in there. And then, and then a, bunch of, a bunch of work uh, behind closed doors in the film room, uh, getting with him on the board, um, you know, watching practice, watching some of my stuff from – previous years, watching some of the guys, studying them as much as we can. So as much mental work as he can possibly get right now, we're, we're utilizing. Is there a player you want him studying that you've had in the past? Just, just all my guys over the years. You know, I've had some some different dudes with uh, different body types. You know, we've looked at a lot of Ziggy Ansa, who I had in Detroit for years and years. Uh, we've looked at a, a bunch of guys that have different skill sets. A guy going way back named Kyle Van Den Bosch, who, who played with extreme effort. We've watched a lot, you know, a lot of him with, with uh, Van Den Bosch. And, just different things, uh, different guys that do different things that kind of correlate to his, his skill set. In terms of uh, Nick, Robert said he really want him to get his, his sea legs, for lack of a better term, out there. Once he does return, how quickly do you think he can get back in that football form? I think, I think he'll be able to get back pretty quickly. You know, he comes from a, from a Big Ten school that, you know, um, you know, high level of competition. He's been at a high level of competition, you know, basically his entire life. So. I think once we get him back in there, he'll integrate back in and, and be just fine. Chris, in terms of your coaching style, has it always been extremely intense on the field? And is that a way you want it to carry over to how you guys play with, as you yeah, said, their hair on the um, That's just kind of the, the way I've always been. You know, I've said in the past, kind of going all the way back to when I first started lacing them up in middle school football. You know, put my cleats on, walked out on the field, and heart started racing, started sweating, and just hit it with my hair on fire, going as fast as I can go, as hard as I can go. So that's what, you know, try to bring the energy out there at practice. You know, um, I don't necessarily think the players always need it, but it's, you know, sometimes during the dog days they might need it, and I'm going to try to bring it as much as I can. Did it, did it catch some guys off guard, you think, right away? Uh, I don't know that it caught them off guard. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit, I don't know. You'd have to ask them about that. What are your first impressions of Bosa? Just a couple, couple weeks getting to have him in meetings, and obviously, but just you get to be around the person a little bit and the, and the player. What are your first impressions? Obviously, a very sharp guy, um, extensive football knowledge. Um, was coached very well in, in in college by his college defensive line coach, so he has a very good understanding of the game, very good understanding of the techniques, um, and then just a good guy that the guys seem to want to be around, um, like being around, um, and a team guy. 
unselfish guy. How much do you utilize a nose tackle? Um, qu quite a bit. Usually there's an, on first and second down, there's a nose tackle every game. Now, it's not the traditional nose that maybe everybody in the NFL kind of envisions a, a nose tackle being the, you know, the six foot one, 350 pound dude. Ours is a little different. We utilize explosion and quickness. You know, guys like um, DJ Jones and, and Sheldon Day and Julian Taylor and, and, um, some of the guys we have, you know, all fit that mold. We do it a little bit more with explosion and quickness than, than sheer size at the nose tackle position. But yeah, we utilize it quite a bit.